point off. I'm going to switch in about, it's got one more strike, I think, and then I'm done. <laughs> so, well, yeah. We're going to, um, we opened the applications this week for the school. Yeah. By the way, if you... Okay. Are you guys hearing me okay? I'm just, okay, cool. All right. Yeah, so we opened the applications on Thursday. We've got applications flooding in already. So, if you've not got yours in yet, you know what to do. Well, well that went down well. <laughs> yeah, well, we're really excited for what the Lord is, is doing through the school. And, you know, even just firsthand watching how the Lord has added increase to these fiery ones on the front row this year, just as they've, you know, paid a price to get them more. And, and, and we, I think anybody who knows these guys has seen the evidence of what the Lord's been doing in their life. But hey, I'm going to welcome you guys up right now. We're going to release some prophetic words. These guys have been praying for you and hearing some things. We're going to go with Rosie first. The first thing I heard before I got here, and I'm, it's time stamped, so I can show you. Um, this man of God right here, would you please stand? Yes. I actually got orange, and when I saw your shirt, I was like, that's him. I heard the Lord say over you, new beginnings. New beginnings. Get ready for what's in store. The old is past, the new has come. That's for you. So Lord, I bless you. And then I heard, um, is there someone here named Deborah or Deb? And if not, that's okay. It could be online or someone that we'll watch later. Or associated with? No, nope, that's okay. I'm still going to release it. For Deborah or Deb, I heard breakthrough. That the God of breakthrough is going to come in and break through in your healings. And you know what? The word of the Lord is for, if you want it, grab a hold of it. He's going to come and break through your finances, break through healing. There's also restoration that's going to take place in your family. So for Deborah, whoever else wants to grab a hold of this word. Amen. Um, and then I had one more. Um, is there a Phil? Philip? And it's okay too, if not? Okay, I'm still going to release it. Um, for Philip, I heard wind. The Lord wants to bring a refreshing, a fresh wind of his spirit over you and in filling and just an empowerment to do the stuff. Amen. We know that's moving as the hands and feet of Jesus. Amen. Um, I'm actually not sure who this is for, but I'm just going to share what I believe the Lord has um, spoken to me. Yesterday, my car broke down, and I was stuck on the side of the road, and I was watching all the traffic go by. Car would start, but it wouldn't move, wouldn't go anywhere. And then this morning, uh, during worship, I saw that scene from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, where Aslan comes into the, the garden, where all the statues are, where the, the people that the, the witch had frozen, Aslan came and he breathed on them. And that uh, cement, stone, whatever it was that was on them, melted off and they were free to move. And so I believe what the Lord is saying, for anyone who is feeling stuck and stagnant, there's power there, but you just don't feel like you can move. The Lord wants to come and breathe on you afresh, today to release you from that stuck place and to bring you into the new and all that he has for you. So I just release that over any of you that are feeling stuck right now. Be released, be free in Jesus' name. Good morning. Um, mine actually left the room. It's Kim. <laughs> uh, so in the spirit realm, I have a staff that I use occasionally. And normally, the Lord has me kind of slam down this staff. But this morning, it was actually moving up and down. And then I saw on the left side, there was pink and white flowers that were going down the staff. And what happened is all these cracks started to come, and flowers started to come through. 
And then I saw water coming underneath that and fire come down on the staff and it went underneath the flowers. So what I heard was game changer. And I feel that is for Ken and that she actually will ignite fire onto people with the Lord. And as she worships and intercedes, the Lord works through her to create cracks into others. And those cracks will receive the spirit, but they will also be ignited with fire. So I just bless Kim to be united with a fresh fire and that she would just walk fully in that boldness in the name of Jesus. So I believe my word is for this young lady in the red here in the back. You, yes, red hoodie. Will you stand up? So the, the word that I got this morning from the Lord was warrior and battle ready. Um, and he brought me to Psalms 1839. which says, for you have armed me with strength for the battle and you have subdued under me those who rose up against me. So I just feel like I'm supposed to release strength over you and heavenly divine strategies over you for whatever you face and whatever you're coming upon. So I just bless you in your journey. I believe this word is for you in a black shirt, dark shirt. I believe your name is Mike. Yes, please stand up. Um, in worship, I was looking around trying to see who the Lord has a word, word for. And he highlighted you. And I heard him say that you are a breath of fresh air. You are that cool breeze in the summer sun to the people around you. And he's currently doing a work in you. He's giving you increase and preparing you and preparing the people around you to receive what he has deposited in you, that you will witness to the people who need to hear him. And your character, your enthusiasm will be that fresh air that people will notice is different, different in their world. And they will see the heart of the Father on you. Amen. I have a word for my two favorite aunties. Addie and Netta, if you would stand up, please. <laughs> the Father wants to know that he is well pleased over you, he delights over you. He looks forward to your times together, and not one of your prayers have fallen to the ground. He sees you, he blesses you, and he's taking care of your family and all that pertains to you. Thank you, Father, for my dear aunts that I've known for the 24 years I've been in Florida, I just thank you that you have blessed them and that you're continuing to bless them and that you're strengthening them for every battle that they face. And I just thank you that they're such a blessing to you and to everyone around them. Thank you, Jesus, for their lives. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, team. Give them a round of applause. Awesome. Well, trust some people got encouraged. Towards the end of 2023, the Lord started to speak to me through the life of Joseph. And, um, you know, I'm sure most of us know the story, but, you know, just to, you know, quick summarize, you know, you know, the Lord spoke to Joseph and gave him certain promises in his life. And, you know, maybe he was a little bit of a big head, but, uh, you know, he, he didn't, it didn't please his his brothers too well and, and they betrayed him and sold him into slavery and he was taken to Egypt and despite being a you know a, a person of you know great integrity who, who the Lord's hand was continually on he, he finished up in in prison finished up in in jail uh, you know through a, a betrayal and I I wrote this in, in my Bible because it was from the jail that the Lord in a day promoted him took him from the jail into the palace and put him of influence over many nations and I here's what I wrote in my Bible I wrote it's vitally important to keep investing in supernatural ministry and not neglect that part of our calling God's plan for a nation was linked to Joseph's ability to interpret dreams 
And we have to realize that every spiritual gift, everything that the Lord gives us is a weapon of mass destruction against darkness. You know, and, and, and sometimes, you know, I'm convinced that we don't really understand the power and the significance and the potential of, of the spiritual gifts and the things that the Lord has distributed amongst his church. And, and if, we, if we belittle what we carry, if we don't view it rightly, if we don't put correct value on what the Lord has given us, we're not going to use it to its full potential and we're going to miss what the Lord wants to do through those things. And I want to say this again, and I want some people to get a little excited, you know, because every spiritual gift of the Lord is a weapon of mass destruction against the spiritual forces of darkness. And, you know, as, as I was praying, you know, I, I, heard, I heard this. If you don't keep investing in your call to live a lifestyle of signs, wonders, and miracles, you're going to miss key moments that are meant to lead to promotion and greater influence. And, and I started, started to ask the Lord, like, what, why am I hearing these kind of things? And I did a little bit of soul searching, and I asked the Lord, show me my heart. Why are you speaking to me? And I came to this realization that I'd neglected a key part of my ministry. I'd, I'd been called and anointed for supernatural ministry, for a, for a lifestyle of signs, wonders, and miracles. And you know what? Hey, we're family, right? I can be real with you. I, I'd let some past disappointment start to speak a little too loudly to me. I'd got, I'd got busy doing really good and noble things, which maybe weren't all from the Lord. And, and I'd, I, you know, through this allowing disappointment, not dealing with it, not bringing it before the Lord, not going through a proper process, I'd allowed disappointment to speak to me and influence my life and what I was, how I was going to go about my life, how I was going to go about my ministry and what the potential for the future is and what the Lord wants to do through my life. You see, we got to guard our hearts. The, the enemy loves you know, whether it's disappointment, whether it's bitterness, jealousy, envy, whatever it is, the enemy loves to come at us with these kind of things because, let me tell you, there's lies attached to them. And if he, if he can tempt us into partnering with these things, a whole bunch of lies come with them too. And what do lies do? They disempower us. They break down our understanding of our identity and ultimately they rob Jesus of what he paid for on the cross. And the enemy loves to come at us with these things because he knows that we're tempted to believe him. He knows that we're tempted to partner with these things. And so we've got to be diligent and guard in our hearts. What does the scripture say? Di above all else. Here's, here's a tip. When you, when you find a verse that starts with above all else, pay close attention. Above all else, guard your heart. And I, I don't know, maybe... Maybe there's something I'm sharing today which is resonating with you. Maybe there was a time where you had a high level of belief for what the Lord wanted to do through you. Maybe there was a time where you believed higher about the kinds of signs, wonders, and miracles the Lord wanted to do through your life. Or is it just me? Maybe you have an ache, just a knowing that there's supposed to be something more in my life that's not in my life. And I, I want to propose to us that one of the things that's in the heart of God for you, for myself, and every one of God's beloved children is a truly supernatural life, an authentic supernatural life. I'm not talking about performance. I'm not talking about showmanship. I'm talking about the raw power of God on his children for signs, wonders, and miracles. The authentic, the real deal, the real fire on God's children for signs, wonders, and miracles. You know, signs, wonders, and miracles are to be our norm. The demonstrations of God's power which open up realms of influence, just like Joseph, he went from the prison to the palace to influence over many nations in one day. L listen, w when we steward the things that God says are important to us, when we steward the things that he gives us, when we put proper value on the gifts, 
when we look at it and find the right perspective, something amazing can happen. God can take a person from a prison to a palace to over many nations in one day. Someone better believe it's possible for you too. Because p- power opens up realms of influence. Some people are going to get baptized in power today. Oh, I got a hanky. That was my first ever hanky. I never had a hanky before, guys. <laughs> oh man, Pastor Don's going to be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> and you know we've you know we've heard Pastor Don teach on signs, wonders, and miracles many, many times. And and I'm, I'm probably not going to say you know anything that you've maybe not already heard. And I'm certainly not going to say it as well as he would say it. But signs, wonders, and miracles are not meant to stop at 12:30 when we leave this place. We, we see signs, wonders, and miracles. I got another hanky. We, we see signs, wonders, and miracles every single Sunday here. Every single Sunday, we see hands go up, people get healed, and the raw power of God is on display. But listen, it's not meant to stop at 12.30 when the service ends. G- God's plan is to put the raw power of God on every street in every nation of this globe. And listen, it's... Listen, it's through you and it's through me and it's through all of his beloved children. (laughs) I was supposed to preach with this. (laughs) Turn with me to Mark 6. And just just for a little context, the the disciples, you know, they've been with Jesus already for a little while and you know they've been close to him they've watched him doing miracles they've been trained by him they've been sent out two by twos and they've been doing miracles themselves and you know and we know the story they came back to Jesus amazed about what happened when they were sent out you know the the training this important part of the new testament life a new covenant life the training you know it had worked and then we get to Mark 6, and and Jesus is about to introduce them to the next part of the training. Because he's been developing the kingdom supernatural lifestyle, but the next part of the training is to equip and empower others. And, you know, they've been equipped and empowered in something, and now the calling was to give it away. And so, Mark 6, we have the first story of the, the miracle feeding of a large crowd, and, you know, many of us know this well. It's the feeding of the 5,000, which, which, by the way, m- many scholars say was probably more like 12,000. And you'll see in the text, because it actually sa- says 5,000 men. And so many scholars believe the crowd was probably more like 12,000. So we got the feeding of 5,000 here in Mark 6. And then a couple of chapters later, we got the feeding of the 4,000 in Mark 8. And I'm just going to tell you this up front. I, I think one of the reasons, not the only reason, but one of the reasons that we have this miracle of mass feeding repeated is because there was something that the disciples were supposed to get the first time around, which they didn't quite get. I'm going to want to show you this in the text. Why don't we read this together? Mark 6, I'm going to read from verse 30. Yeah, we've got the scripture on the screen. It says, The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught And he said to them, Come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, this is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. And they said to him, 
Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they went, when, and when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in groups on the green grass. So they da- sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. Let me ask you a question. Let me just hone in on verse 41 for a moment. I don't know if we can get verse 41 on the screen, Hilliard, possibly. Verse 41. So he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. Think about this, why I'm talking. Why, why did he ask them to set before the people? Think about that. Let me ask you another question. So again, we, we know that it was 5,000 men, which was probably more like 12,000. And, and so we're sat in groups of 50 to 100. So again, we can logically say the groups were maybe 200, 250. How much bread would one of the disciples have had to carry to feed that many people? I, I've got some thoughts about this. I don't think that's what happened. I don't think Jesus said, you guys are similar chosen, like Peter's the strong one. He's like, hey, Peter, pick up that boulder-sized loaf of bread there and, and take it over to that group. I, I don't think that's what happened. I think what happened, I think Jesus said to his disciples, he said, here you go, take this piece and go set it before that group. Take this piece and go set it before that group and take this piece and go set it before that group. Why, why is this important? Why did Jesus say set it before the people? I, I, want, I want to propose something. The, the lesson that Jesus is teaching his disciples is to equip and empower with what they've been given. And so when it was set before the people, I want to propose to us that every single person in the crowd had to get up themselves, activate the faith in the heart and say, I'm going to partner with Jesus and I'm going to miraculously take a piece of bread off that tiny piece that's going to feed me. I'm going to take the bread that I need from this tiny piece. I want to propose to us that Jesus right now is not just empowering the 12, he's empowering the whole crowd. He's training all of his disciples for what is soon to be available, and that's the miracle realm of a new covenant where signs, wonders, and miracles are available to all these people. I, I want to say that Jesus right now is inviting everybody to engage with the faith in the heart and look to Jesus and say, I'm going to partner with Jesus in this miracle. You hearing me? I did a, a, a search yesterday on the, on the b- biblical usage of this phrase, to, to set before. And, and it's actually used uh, quite a lot in the Gospels, this idea to set before. And it's most often used when Jesus teaches the parables. And I'll give you a couple of examples from Matthew 13, when it says that Jesus, there was listeners and he set before them a parable. And I, I read this yesterday. This, I, this biblical idea of to set before means to entrust, to commit to one's charge. Think about it. So you take the example of the parable. And it's like, okay, Jesus is saying, can, can you see the revelation in it? And do you have the heart to steward it? That's what he's saying. You know, he says of the parable, Jesus taught in parables so that seeing, they would not see and hear and they would not hear. So Jesus taught in parables not to reveal truth, but to hide truth. Why was he trying to hide truth? 
Because if you have the heart to search out a matter, you'll have a heart to steward it. So what's Jesus doing here? So, so he sets before them a parable because he's inviting people, hey, who's hungry? Who's got the heart? Who's got the desire? Who, who's going to be diligent enough to extrapolate what is the truth in this and steward it? So, wh- so when he sets the bread before them, what is he doing? These words, he's entrusting, committing to one's charge. So the bread's set before them to one's charge. Again, he's inviting them to come and partner with a miracle. I, I got I to love the, the imagery here. You know, and again, just, you know, just use, use that, that gift of imagination you have. But, you know, we've got, we've got thousands of people and Jesus is sending his disciples out to set the bread before these groups. And the people are, you know, pro- probably, you can imagine, you know, what's going on, like, you know, seeing the miracles, you know, being in that place. But the imagery, imagery here is fantastic because everybody's partnering with a miracle. But listen, no, nobody's focused on anybody other than Jesus. Je- you know, people in the crowd, they're thinking, what is Jesus doing? You know, the disciples are serving. The disciples are bringing the bread out. But the focus is on Jesus. See, I think sometimes one of the hindrances to walking in signs, wonders, and miracles is we put faith in whether we have enough faith. Oh, I, I don't know. It. Do I have enough faith for this one? Do I have enough faith for, for this? What are you doing? You're putting faith in whether you have enough faith. Look at the imagery here. It's fantastic because the faith is, we've got our eyes locked on Jesus. Our eyes are locked on Jesus. See, Jesus said, you don't need a lot of faith. He said, you need a mustard side seed of faith. Look, Listen, let me say this to you. God did not leave you short on faith. He doesn't do half measures. He doesn't shortchange his people. God did not, not give you enough faith. You have enough faith. He said if you have a mustard-sized seed of faith, you can cast a mountain into the sea. You have enough faith. The question is, will you bring a faith into partnership with Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith? The imagery here is just fantastic because everyone in the crowd is focused on the Christ. Everyone in the crowd is focused on Jesus. Everybody knows this is happening because Jesus is in the room or on the field. This is happening because Jesus is here. And so we got, we're locked in on Jesus, but bringing the faith that we have into partnership with him to co-labor in the miracles. See, Jesus right here is giving us a glimpse into the new covenant life to come. And he's training them for what is about to soon be available to them. Where it's like, okay, you've got enough faith. Now lock eyes with the Christ. Lock eyes with Jesus. Work it out in intimacy. See, faith, apart from intimacy with Christ, is actually lawlessness. Go read Matthew 8. Faith, apart from intimacy with Jesus, is lawlessness. Let me say it this way. If you want to enter a lifestyle of signs, wonders, and miracles, get in submission to the commission. Rosie liked that one. (laughs) Get in submission to the commission. You hearing me? Because the faith, we, we have enough faith. Put your hand on your heart. Say this with me. I have enough faith. I'm not lacking. You have what you need. Bring it into partnership with Jesus. Anything is possible. Turn with me to Mark 8. Actually, just before I go there, let's just go back to Mark 6, 41. He says, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. 
No, it doesn't, it doesn't say whether they actually set the bread before the people. You might say to me, well, we can assume that they, you know, we can, you know, likelihood is that they did. I'm not sure. See, before we go to Mark 8, let me say this. If, if we, as people call to equip and disciple and empower, if we give a piece of bread to every single person in the crowd, what, what have I done? I've created dependence on me. I've created dependence on me. So part of the idea of setting the bread before the people is to create the conditions for empowerment. To, turn with me to Mark 8. I'm just going to read from verse 1. Let's see if you notice the difference in the language here. Mark 8, verse 1. In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered, and they had nothing to eat, he called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on their way. And some of them have come from very far. And his disciples answered him, you'd think they'd get a lesson, wouldn't you? How can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? And he asked them, how many loaves do you have? They said, seven. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. And he took seven loaves and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. Here we are again. Next phrase. And they set them before the crowd. Test passed. And I think one, one of the reasons that this miracle was repeated is because it was something that the, the disciples were supposed to get the first time, which they didn't quite get. And the second time, I, I think some really good discipleship happened Discipleship conversations happened between Mark 6 and Mark 8. Because what was, what was the role of the disciples? You know, P Peter's, you know, the leader of, of the, you know, the church after Pentecost. The disciples are equipping, you know, planting churches, doing the work of ministry, equipping the saints. And so this was the first tr part of training was to get them ready to walk in it themselves because you can't pass on what you don't have. The second part of the training was to equip them to know how to equip. And we see the second time that this happened. So I want to get a little practical and I want to give us seven keys to start or restart moving in signs, wonders and miracles. And this is mightily unprofound number one choose but well, it is kind of profound number one choose see you have to choose it you have to surrender to the call of God you know and you know some of us have, have got a choice whether we go on doing good and noble things Or we get really serious with the Lord and, and get start stewarding the things that he's actually really asking us to steward. You know, let me tell you, this is a costly life and a costly walk. Because, and I'm not speaking this over you, but it doesn't always go right. You know, there, there, there are times, there's, there's a learning process, and, and there are times where, you know, the, the pain of this not going right hurts and we're back to this disappointment thing. What, what do we do when somebody comes to us needing something from God and they don't get it? We, we've got to use that as motivation to get back with the Father and find out why it didn't work. Because, you know, Jesus, this should have worked and it didn't. And we get with the Father and we process the disappointment. But we've we got, we got to choose, you know, each of us have been given the spirit of power, love, and self-control. Say that with me. I've been given a spirit of power, love, and self-control. You have the power to choose and lead yourself. Second thing, take the necessary measures to become fully convinced. 
you know, sometimes I, I, I wonder, you know, and I ask this question of myself, you know, I wonder how, how convinced really am I of this kingdom life? Because let me give you an analogy. If, if Papa Rick is, is a billionaire here, and he's got multiple billions in the bank, right? And Papa Rick says to me, he says, hey, Ben, here's what I want you to do. Come have coffee with me at 7 a.m. each morning. And in a couple of days this week, I'm going to ask you to go drop a, a letter off for me and, and take a message. And, and I'll reward you generously at the end of the week. I, I'll tell you now, I'll be there at 10 to 7 <laughs> every, every morning. But, but you know, like, like we've got a Heavenly Father who says the same thing to us. He says the same thing to us. He said, your, your reward will be great. And sometimes I look at my life and like, how much do I believe that? We, we have to pay the price to get ourselves fully convinced. One of the ways we're going to get ourselves fully convinced is that we renew our minds with the Bible. We, re, we renew our minds with the Bible. You see, let me, let me give you an example. You know, it repeatedly says with Jesus, everywhere he went, he healed all who were sick. All. Okay? We know this. He healed all. Okay. So, we have the, we have the healing service, or I, I go out on the streets and I, I pray for healing, and let's, let's say 50% of the people get healed. I've got a choice. I, I can either reduce my beliefs and say, okay, f- you know, 50% is not bad. You know, I, I can do that, or I can say, no, no. The standard of Scripture is that all should get healed. And, and by, you know, in worship, standing on that truth and saying, Lord, this is the standard that you've set. I'm going to stand in this reality and I'm going to believe for this. And by standing in that place, I'm going to pull my experience up to the level of what I believe because believe, correct believing always aligns our life. And so we, we renew our minds with the Bible. The other thing we do is we keep testimonies. We've got to, you guys have talk, heard me talk on testimonies a lot, but you know, the, the ability to stay aware of what God has done creates awareness for what he wants to do. So we renew our mind with the Bible and we keep testimonies. The third thing, the third key, is to keep investing in yourself and pursuing growth. And when the Lord spoke to me through Joseph back at the end of 23, really, he was urging me, he was saying, there's a flame in your life, Ben, that is in danger of dying out right now. Don't let that flame die out. You see, you can't, you can't keep a flame alive when you reduce your call, when you call to live in supernatural things and you reduce it to living in natural things. You can't keep that flame alive. We, we have to get on God's assignment. You know, when, when I lay my life down in worship, when I give myself to be on God's assignment, which for all of his kids includes signs, wonders, and miracles, when I give myself to this reality, there's a flame in my life. The flame comes on my life because my life becomes an altar. My life becomes an altar to the Lord and the flame is alive and the flame grows. And so we have to keep pursuing what he's calling us into to ignite and steward the fire in our lives. We've got to deal with past regrets, disappointments, and failures. I had a conversation with Steve Backland not long back. We were on a Zoom call with him, and, and I asked him this question. I said, um, what are your top tips for processing failure in a way to you know, get good growth out of it? And he, like he does, he, you know, he just makes you laugh. And, and he looked at me and was like, well, first thing, I'd stop calling it failure and start calling it learning because, because those who succeed the most also fail the most. And, and we've got to be okay with failure. Sometimes I just, I just think, you know, we've got to lower the stakes in our own mind a little. We've got to be okay with failure. And I, I love that. Let's not call it failure. Let, let's call it learning. And, you know, we, some of us, you know, we have had failures. We've had disappointments. We stepped out. We tried stuff and it didn't work. And we've got this voice 
that we counsel ourselves with this, this harsh critic and we, and we think it's noble and we think it you know pleases God but listen that harsh inner voice that, that critic let me say it this way you can't counsel yourself in a way that you wouldn't counsel somebody else and some of us counsel ourselves with this harsh inner voice this harsh critic if you wouldn't say it to somebody else you can't say it to yourself or oh, that's a lack of integrity Listen to me. God is kind. God is not angry at you. God is not disappointed at you. Hey, listen to me. You got some of you got to hear me. Even if you did that thing and you meant it, He's still pleased with you. And and for some of us, God is trying to woo us. He's trying to woo us in a way. He's trying to bring us back, you know, in places. And and we've got this harsh inner voice condemning ourselves. Listen, that's not the voice of the Lord. That that voice will keep you from your destiny. That voice will keep you in shame and keep you distant from the Father. Don't you love this, you know, what, this picture before of, of Isaiah here with Dave? There's something we should all take from that. You know, and th- that inner voice that we have, it's not noble and it's not godly. And it doesn't please the Lord. And some of us in worship, we have to sacrifice that. I love what Pastor Don says. You can't have a, a thought in my mind about me that he's not in his about me. Listen, the Father is proud of you. He's for you. He's inviting you to come and fulfill your purpose and destiny. Here's some good news for you. The the past, whatever's in the past, cannot stop your future. Only the conclusions you make about yourself based on the past can. But here's the good news. You can make new conclusions. Number six. Got to deal with the fear of man. You see, the devil sees our potential and opposes us with a giant. Now listen, I'd love to stand here before everyone in this place and say, there's one of the pastors in the house, I never deal with the fear of man. I'd love to tell you that. Listen, it, the fear of man comes up for me from time to time. You know, I'm English. We don't like to... We don't like to make people uncomfortable. We don't like to put people out. Right? You know, and, and sometimes the fear, like the fear of man pops its head up for me. What I'm saying is, is whether it's the fear of man for you, the fear of missing out, the fear of failure, like wh- whatever it is, I, I know what it's like to have a giant stood there in the way. But, but the, the fear of man, like, I have to remember, as much as I love to be a servant of people, I'm a son of a king who has a calling, an assignment, and a commission for me. And I, and I have to prioritize, I have to prioritize that I have to prioritize what he's put in my life, what he's asked me to steward, um, and the commission that I'm called to. And let me say this. Whatever giant stands before me and stands before you, there's one thing I'm fully convinced of. The raw power of God. The raw power of God. He wants to rest on my life and your life. He wants to flow through my life and through your life. And he wants to heal the sick. He wants to raise the dead. He wants to cast out demons. I'm going to say it again. Whatever giant stands before you, I'm fully convinced of this, that the raw power of God wants to rest on your life. He wants to move through your life. He wants to heal the sick. He wants to raise the dead. And he wants to cleanse lepers and cast out demons. There are many things I could say about getting free from the fear of man, but the people I know who are fully free of a fear of man, it came through the baptism of power and the baptism of fire. And some of us, this is going to be a marking day. And my final point is to take risk. You see, when David stood below before Goliath 
a whole army of mighty men. Oh, Goliath was there for the taking. And a whole army of mighty warriors stood there and watched as David stepped up and slayed that giant. We've got to be okay with risk. Listen, I said it before, you know, the stakes don't have to be so high that if it goes wrong, oh, you know, we're crushed. We've got to be okay with risk. Listen, he who is for you, he, he who is for you, he who is in you, is greater than he that is in the world. Listen, I'm talking to Davids today, I believe it. I'm, I'm talking to Davids today who are giant slayers. I'm talking to David today, who whatever the enemy brings before you, whether it's the fear of man or, the, or whatever it is, I'm talk, I believe it, but I'm talking to David today, who the Lord is going to, there's people today who are going to get baptized with power, and he's going he's gonna to put something in you, with you, in you, and I'm talking to people who are bold as lions today. I'm talking to people who, you walked in with that taunting giant, and he doesn't, leave with you today I, I want to finish with this and I want to want to pray for a couple of people but I, I want to finish with this because the world needs what we have hey why don't you stand with me the, the world needs what we have let the, the Holy Spirit start to rest on your life. I wanted to pray for a couple of groups of people and, and the first group I want to pray for is anyone who wants to make a recommitment to walking in signs, wonders and miracles. Maybe you know, you got busy, maybe you got off track, maybe like me, a little bit of disappointment got in, but, but whatever reason you want to make a recommitment to the Lord. I'll get in submission to your commission, and I know that includes signs, wonders, and miracles. And and if that's you, I want you to be really brave and and just come down to the front. Um, the second group of people I want to pray for is anybody who you've actually never made a choice, or maybe you never even realized that God wanted to use you in this way. But people who for the first time you want to make a choice to get it on submission to the commission and say God I surrender and I want you to use me in this way I, I choose to let you move through me in signs wonders and miracles and, and I'm making a decision today to say yes to that lifestyle and then the third group of people I want to pray for is some of us and it's like the Lord brought you to a place where, you, you know, the disciples went to the 5,000 for the first time and kind of didn't quite get it. And you, and you know that the Lord brought you to a place where there was something you were supposed to get, there was something that was supposed to happen and it didn't happen. And it's like you've beaten yourself up and, and you've had that inner critic and you, know, you told yourself, oh, you've blown it and you're not going to fulfill your destiny, you're not going to fulfill all of your call. But that that you've heard that voice and I, and I want to tell you that God's given you another chance and he's redeeming that because the 4,000 is coming and if, if any of those three are you I, I just want to invite you to, to come to the front and I'm going to have my team just start moving and laying hands on people and just, just praying for people if we could have a little bit of music that would be 
That would be awesome. Um, and yeah, if you guys want to just start moving around and, and praying for people, that would be awesome. Um, in church family, there's the Lord's doing some precious things right now, and so d- don't be a spectator. Um, if you would just be blessing what the Lord is doing, you know, use your prayer language or or pray out of your, your natural tongue, whatever that is, but just be be blessing what the Lord is doing right now. And I believe some people are here, you're about to be baptized in power. Some of us, it, it, it's fire and power. The Lord's breaking off the fear of man and and strongholds. Some of us have, it's almost like we've, because of things we've believed or we've beaten ourselves up, it's almost like we've become caged. It's like we've, that we, it's this self-constructed box of limitation. And, and the Lord's going to break that. He's going to break you free of that. And I, and I just hear this right now, that, that today you're coming out. You're coming out of that box. And if, if you're, if you're a, a leader in this church and you're not uh, being prayed, uh, if, if you're not being prayed for, would could I come have you join? I think we need a few more people to pray. And I, I just hear the Holy Spirit say this, when you leave today, you will not be the same. When you leave today, you will not be the same. And and some of us, it's like miracles are being activated. I feel like for some of us, it's like you've tr- you've tried it before, but but something's happening today. He's putting something in you today. Where the next time it's going to be different. And there's this ease coming, and it's that it's the submission to the commission, and it, it, it's the locking eyes with the Christ. And and for some of us, we've we've tried it before and it's not worked. I just hear this, when you leave today, everything will be different. And this, some of us, is, this lady here, this is the power of the Holy Spirit. Can, can I have a couple of people pray with this lady? The power of the Holy Spirit is on your life right now. In Jesus' name, thank you for what you're doing, Lord. There's, there's healing coming over you right now. There's healing of a mind, healing of a heart. And, the, and he's putting a fire in you. He's putting a fire. He's putting a fire in you. Hey, listen, you, you're a worship. You're a worshiper, and he's calling you to live a life of worship. You surrender to the mission, to the commission, as a life of worship. And he's putting a fire on your life. That you, um, I, I hear this. That, that there's two books in you. You're going to write two books. What, what starts on this day, what starts on this day, is going to flow into the streets, and and you're going to write books in the future what started on this day. just keep praying church family as you guys pray the Lord does more you just keep blessing what the hand of the Lord is doing right now the sidelines you were made for the center you need to get right down the other front this is where you belong you're you're a leader in God's kingdom 
And he's made you so. He's made you so. He's made you for the more. And I, and I say this with, with love in my heart and love in my eyes, but you need to think differently about yourself. Because he's, he's made you for something amazing. He's made you for something more. He's made you for something beautiful. And I say in Jesus' name, be baptized. raw power of God in his life Lord raw power of God in his life power of the Holy Spirit all over his life I, I, I feel like there's a couple more people and, it, and it's like there's a call on your life to surrender I feel like there's a couple, there's a couple of more people and, and the Holy Spirit's just touching you right now. I just say this, that there's, there's grace and mercy for surrender. And, you know, I, I heard it said this way, in the world we surrender to lose, whereas in the kingdom we surrender to win. And I, I feel like there's, there's a couple of people and, and you look back on your story and, and feel like there's been a lot of loss. I feel like your stories, you know, there's a lot of losing in your story. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying this, you, you were not born to lose, you were born to win. And your conquering is in the kingdom through surrender. If, if, if you know this is for you, I, I just think, just, just come down to the front right now. We're not going to do anything weird. We just, we just want to pray for you and just agree with what the Lord's doing. But, but it, there's something about you surrendering right now and coming down to the front as a sign to the Lord. Yeah, can, can, we, can we have a couple of the ladies pray for Hannah? I, I, f- I feel like there's one more person for this one, and it's like the Lord's calling you just to surrender, and, and, it, and it's, it's not even so much about what happens in this moment. It's just like a surrendering of the will. If, if that's you, just, just come down to the front right now. people pray with this gentleman right here um, yeah uh, Papa Rick I don't know if you're able to pray with this gentleman um, um, Russ I, I just saw anointing oil pouring out over you can I, have, can I have one more person come, come pray with Russ over here, if possible? The, the man in the orange shirt, would you help me, sir? Would you, would you just come pray over here? Thank you so much. R- Russ, I, I, just, I just saw anointing oil pouring out right now just receive the Holy Spirit fire in his life God and, and I, I feel like there's anointing for places that you've not yet yet touched it's like the Lord's about to open up new places of influence and, and there's an anointing for those things and there's a um, there's something about Joshua and um there's, some, there's something about Joshua. The Lord's going to speak to you through the life of Joshua. But, but he's, he's pouring out an anointing for realms of influence that you've not stepped into. And I see him opening up, up gates to you. And um, I, I see just a, just a path being illuminated. And he's about to open up a new opportunity to you. And, and you're going you're gonna to know it's him. He's, he's going he's gonna to show you. He's going to speak to you. But Father, we just pray an anointing of the Holy Spirit all over this man flood his life fill him thank you thank you for his sacrifice to serve you yep 
Just keep praying with him. You need to get in the game, bro. Come on. You belong up here. than normal the Lord's doing some things which are are really important right now and so we're we're not going to we're not going to ask anybody to to move If, if you're receiving from the Lord if you're being prayed for if he's doing something with you just stay as you are we're not going to rush this but we are going to officially close the service if if you are able to to stay and keep praying we'll be grateful for that but but if you're not we we bless you to go and and have a wonderful week hey love you church family